The first step is to completely remove the lower pressure wheel. Next, remove the keeper roller on top of the measuring wheel. Note that the keeper roller has a flat washer on each side of the roller that will be used again when the wheel is replaced. We will now swing the front guide rollers out of the way. First loosen the front bolt. Now completely remove the rear bolt. Simply push on the top of the guide roller to swing it out of the way. There is now clearance to remove the measuring wheel from the frame. We will now remove the encoder. Remove the four screws holding the encoder to the adapter. Hold on to the encoder as you remove the last screw to make sure that it does not fall and get damaged. Pull the encoder straight out, making sure not to jar the coupling. Remove the plug on the top of the adapter. Now remove the four screws that hold the adapter in place. The adapter fits snugly into a recess on the hub and often needs a nudge to come loose. Use a rubber hammer and gently tap on the corner to break it loose. The o-ring may come loose when the adapter is removed. Note the lip on the back of the adapter. It aligns with the groove on the hub. Next we will remove the encoder coupling. Use the small allen wrench to loosen the two set screws that hold the coupling on the shaft and slide off the coupling. Take a wooden dowel about the size of a broom handle and put it through a hole in the measuring wheel to stop it from rotating while a large nut is removed from the shaft. Use the 1 7 socket and loosen and remove the nut. Take the dowel out of the measuring wheel. First loosen all four screws and then remove all four screws that attach the hub to the frame. Hold the measuring wheel and remove the hub and shaft assembly. You will probably have to tap on the shaft from the encoder side to get it to come out. Note that there is a keyway on the shaft that connects the shaft and the measuring wheel. The measuring wheel is now free to be removed if necessary. If you're replacing the bearings, the hub on the encoder side also needs to be removed. First loosen all four screws and then remove all four screws that attach the hub to the frame. Remove the hub and if you're also replacing the bearings, use the following procedure. Remove the retainer clip and the bearing can normally be removed and replaced with no special equipment.
the other hub with a shaft also needs to have the bearing replaced. First remove the key from the shaft. Now remove the retainer clip for this bearing. You will now need to remove the shaft with the bearing from the hub. You will usually need a press to remove and reinstall the bearing in the shaft. Set up your press to allow pressing the shaft and the bearing out through the bottom of the hub. Get a punch of smaller diameter than the shaft and press the shaft out. Protect the small threaded end of the shaft by putting a nut over it to press on. Now press the shaft out of the bearing. Place the new bearing on the shaft and snug as much as possible manually. Place the shaft in the hub so that you can see the small end of the shaft protruding out of the hub. This will indicate that the shaft is properly aligned in the hub. When replacing bearings on benchmark wireline equipment, Always make sure to align the lubrication hole on the outer race of the bearing with the external grease fitting. You will now press the bearing with the shaft in it into the hub. Note the position of the shaft and the bearing when it's properly installed. If the shaft spins easily, then it's properly installed. Now replace the key in the shaft. Note the keyway in the wheel hub and the key on the shaft. When reinstalling the shaft, rotate it so that the key goes in the keyway. Now place the hub in the frame. Rotate the hub so that the grease fitting faces to the right and the four screw holes on the hub align with the holes on the frame. Insert the screws finger tight only at this time. On the encoder side of the frame, reinstall the other hub. Rotate the hub to align the screw holes on the hub and the frame. Reinstall and tighten the four screws on the hub. On the other side of the frame, tighten the four screws holding that hub in place. Reposition the large wooden dowel in the wheel and tighten the nut with the wrench.
Remove the wooden dowel and rotate the measuring wheel to verify proper installation. Note that the small end of the shaft has a flat side. Replace the coupling on the small shaft. Align one of the set screws with the flat side of the shaft. Firmly tighten both set screws. Lubricate and replace the O-ring on the adapter. DC-111 lubricant works well in this application. Replace the adapter and all four screws. Tighten all four screws firmly. Rotate the measuring wheel so that the tang on the coupling is horizontal. Rotate the other end of the coupler on the encoder to vertical. Replace the encoder while looking through the plug hole on top and rotating the measuring wheel as necessary to get the two parts of the coupling to mesh. Reinstall the four screws holding the encoder in place. Reinstall the plug in the adapter. Reposition the guide rollers. Replace the bolt and retighten both bolts. When replacing the keeper roller, make sure that you install a flat washer on each side of the roller. When replacing the pressure wheel, you must compress the tensioner to allow the bolt to go into the wheel. Tighten the bolt. Test the installation by rotating the wheels.